final day. We're gonna get this bad boy done finally. I do have to quickly half redact something from the last video. Remember when I ended it off, I talked about the chain guide not fitting and being totally wrong. Uh, turns out I was, I was half wrong. It's still not the greatest, but it does fit on this bike, sort of. As it turns out, you need the stupid white stock plastic chain guard and to use a piece of that to, to make this thing work. And I mean, who keeps that? That's a, the first thing I threw in the garbage was that and all the stupid reflectors on this thing like two years ago. So what I did was busted out my lathe and machined some spacers to fit inside there, did a little bit of maneuvering and got this bad boy to fit up. Kind of. And I say kind of because if you look down here, it like, it lifts the chain big time. Like, look at that. And apparently that's how this one and some of the other ones fit, which is crazy to me. So whatever, it's a piece of plastic that I'll just run this thing on the stand until that wears in properly and call it a day. Someone needs to recalculate their measurements on that fit up. But anyways, we're finally gonna get the graphics on this thing and see the final look. I crudely ripped the package apart like the wild animal that I am. Then we'll give this thing its first fire up, which could go either way. And more than likely have to do a little bit of tuning and whatnot just to get it idling and kind of running so it can break in on the stand a little bit. And then finally do the big reveal of what this whole bike turned out to be, which that part I'm excited to make because there's a lot of cool B-roll I get to film. So that's the game plan. Let's get to it. I stopped filming for at least an hour and just have been staring at this thing and holy shit, man. The look on my face right now probably says it all. This is so rad. I can't show you just yet because we still have one more thing left to do and that's to fire this thing up for the first time. I really hope it doesn't need a bunch of tuning and dicking around because uh, outside that door, there's a bunch of snow on the ground and there's really not a whole lot I can do about that. So um, yeah, hopefully I can at least just get it running and idling clean in here and I'll call that good for now. Gotta make sure we're prepared here, just in case. Here we go. Oh, yeah! Goddamn idol gesture! Yeah! Oh! makes me happy. It's running flawless. Ran it through all the gears. Everything's all good. Uh, it's going to need a very minimal tune, which is very surprising to me, but uh, there's no point in doing it now. There's snow outside. It's 10 below. I'm not going to ride this thing till springtime, so I'd just be wasting my time, but otherwise, feeling good. So I guess there's only one thing left to do. Let's check out what we built here. Cue the epic montage. My Tiger Kung Fu is better than yours. You must be out of your mind to fight me. Wow, I cannot stop smiling about this thing right now. It looks so crazy and feels so good to get that idea out of my head finally because it's been just brewing in there for 
shit, like eight months now. But thanks to that, this thing was obviously very meticulously thought out and everything flows together from the colors and the part choices, like everything just kind of meshes together super well. There's not too much of anything going on in one spot. And that's that's what really makes a clean build, if you ask me. It's fucking tooting my own horn here. Doot. But man, I think this is my dream pit bike build, which I won't be able to confirm until I ride it, but uh, I've had a ton of pit bikes over the years. I, shit, I could never count 20, probably. Everything from stock 50s to full-blown super mods. And I mean, obviously stock 50s, they suck. They're no fun at all. And then full-blown super mods, they're really cool and everything, but there comes a point where it's not really a pit bike anymore to me once you have like disc brakes and inverted forks going on and all this other shit that just it's too much it's basically just a, you're riding a big bike at that point with this one i wanted to go with that stock mod route i guess is the term that the kids are using these days keeping the stock drum brakes keeping the stock chassis set up and basically just building around all of that and making it better. That way to me, it still feels like a pit bike, you know? It doesn't have a clutch on there. It's still got shitty brakes and it's still got kind of that weird ergonometry going on because it's made for a kid, but you're not a kid. You're a big fat old man <laughs> on top of it. I don't know. To me, that's really the essence of a pit bike is that awkwardness and, you know, the kind of lack of things here and there. But at the same time, we got some awesome stuff going on, like that big old 143 <laughs> in there. And, all the suspension and stuff, the internals have all been done obviously in the shock and all the stuff to handle what I'm gonna throw at it at the same time. And as I say that, yes, there are some completely unnecessary parts all over this thing. A lot of fancy billet going on, a lot of little stupid trick things that serve no purpose whatsoever, but I just did that because I wanted to. It makes me happy. For whatever reason, every single one of these little drilled washers and every ounce of billet on this thing, just each one of those pieces adds like 5% onto my smile meter. But I can't wait to rip this thing. It sucks that it took so long to finish and now I'm dealing with winter outside and I can't do it like right now, but uh, that's life. Business has got to come first. I got to make sure I take care of that. It got done. We're ready to go for the spring. One final thing that I should probably address because I've already been asked, uh, I don't even know how many times, is people probably want to know what the total build cost was on this thing. And to be honest with you, it's none of your goddamn business. The whole point of building this thing was to put a big old smile on my face and that's all that matters and mission accomplished. People these days are so quick to tell you what shit costs so they can feel that 10 seconds of heightened importance by flexing whatever they got on the internet like that's something cool to do. To me, it's not about that at all. It's about building, it's about riding, it's about the love of two wheels. It does not matter if it costs 100 bucks or if it costs 100,000. It's all about the spirit and the culture of motorcycling Period. <laughs> Get philosophical on you for a second. But that's it. That's a wrap. We're done. The KLX build series is over. I hope you guys enjoyed this series as much as I enjoyed making it. It was super fun. Clearly I'm gonna enjoy the living shit out of this thing for quite some time. And it just feels good to finally get a completed bike build done on this channel. That's, that's never happened before. And if I'm gonna be perfectly honest right now, I already wanna do another one. That new CRF 110 came out with fuel injection and I kinda wanna see what that's all about. So maybe we'll do another one next year. If you guys wanna see that, make sure you go down below and pick up some 38 Rideco merch because clearly that's how I pay my bills and pay for stuff like this to happen. So uh, maybe we can do that sooner than later. That's it for today. I'm gonna turn the camera off and probably dry hump this thing into oblivion. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again in the next one.